Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. I want to thank everybody for watching this video this morning as the air conditioner kicks in. If you're watching this on our RV and travel channel, thank you guys so much. If you want to see these devotions every single day, I do that on my personal channel, and the, the link is in the description below. It's also going to pop up in, a, in the upper corner here towards the end of the video. So sit tight. We're going to be talking. We've been talking about Jacob the last few days. So if you haven't been following me daily, you can go back on my personal channel and catch up on the last three or four devotions talking about Jacob and his early life. So our topic from today.refrainmedia.com this morning is on the road again. And we're going to be reading Genesis chapter 31 verses 1 through 21 from the English Standard Version of the Bible. So let's go. So now Jacob heard that the sons of Laban were saying, Jacob has taken all of that was our father's, and from what was our father's he has gained all this wealth. And Jacob saw that Laban did not regard him with favor as before. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your kindred, and I will be with you. So Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah into the field where his flock was, and said to them, I see that your father does not regard me with favor as he did before, but the God of my father has been with me. You know that I have served your father with all my strength, yet your father has cheated me and changed my wages ten times. But God did not permit him to harm me. If I said the spotted shall be your wages, then all the flock bore spotted. And if he said the striped shall be your wages, then the flock bore stripes. Thus God has taken away the livestock of your father and given them to me. In the breeding season of the flock, I lifted my eyes and saw in a dream that the goats that mated with the flocks were striped, spotted, and molted. Then the angel of God said to me in a dream, Jacob, and I said, Here I am. And he said, Lift up your eyes and see all the goats that mate with the flocks are striped, spotted, or molted. And for I have seen all that Laman is doing to you. I am the God of Bethel where you anointed a pillar and made a vow to me. Now arise and go out from this land and return to the land of your kindred. Then Rachel and Leah answered him and said, Is there any portion or inheritance left to us in our father's house? Are we not regarded by him as foreigners? For he has sold us, and he has indeed devoured our money. All the wealth that God has taken away from our father belongs to us and to our children. Now then, whatever God said to you, do. So Jacob arose and sent his sons and his wives on camels. He drove away all his livestock, all his property he gained, the livestock in his possession that he had acquired in Padamaram to go into the land of Canaan to his father Isaac. Laban had gone to shear his sheep, and Rachel stole her father's household gods. And Jacob tricked Laban the Aramean by not telling him that he intended to flee. He fled with all that he had and arose and crossed the Euphrates and set his face toward the hill country of Gilead. So how do you respond when life is disappointing or difficult? Do you stay and face your struggles or do you turn away and run? Responding well to life's challenges is a complicated subject, of course. Jacob begins preparing to leave for home because of a revelation from God. But then he sneaks away without telling his uncle about his plan to leave. Sometimes even our obedience to God is tainted with our own tendencies to sin and our reaction to fear. But in the midst of his fear and uncertainty, Jacob begins to understand something of the faithfulness of God. He hears again the voice of the God of Bethel, reminding him of that night long ago when God showed Jacob the runaway with nothing to his name, a stairway to heaven. Now again, even in the midst of another scheme, Jacob is reminded that God's favor comes as a gift. The Apostle Paul explains that our desire to do good is always frustrated by our sin. That's Romans 7, 18-25. And when we are sinned against, we tend to respond in sinful ways. We run away from our disappointments and we become resentful and mean-spirited when we face difficulties. Still, God faithfully pursues us with his loving presence. He reminds us of the way to heaven, the finished work of Jesus, which covers even our misguided efforts to follow God's ways. Let's pray. 
Loving God, thank you for pursuing us and sending Jesus to rescue us from sin. By your Spirit, may we learn to live for you. Amen. This whirlwind tour that Jacob has been going on is going into a new chapter, and it's still a struggle for him. He's still believing God, but he's still struggling to have that faith in God. So while God tells them to leave, he doesn't tell them to leave by being deceitful or sneaky. But that's what he does because he's afraid of Laban and, and his, um, Laban's sons. So the question really is, does Jacob really trust God? Because I'm almost positive. I'm saying this a little bit sarcastically. I'm almost positive that God is more powerful than Laban and his sons. So why worry about Laban and his sons? And it's because Jacob still hasn't surrendered himself to, to God completely. He believes in him. He knows he's there. He knows God's been blessing him. But he won't stop the sinful ways. And just like we read here in the devotional piece of this, you know, we get that same way to ourselves sometimes, don't we? You know, Especially when somebody sins against us, or we perceive or believe that somebody has sinned against us, you know that tends to turn us pretty quickly into being a more sinful person than we normally are, because we have resentment, we have anger, um, maybe even retaliation, revenge, all those things. And again, as we see constantly through stories in the Bible and probably in, our, in your own life, whenever we do these things. It never works out or it may work out temporarily or we think it worked out and then it doesn't so revenge and anger and all those things resentment just put them away put away those sinful things open your heart open your mind to, to follow what Christ is teaching you, or trying to teach you and trying to show you not everybody's gonna be your friend not everybody's gonna do right by you it's not your fault if they don't. But what is your fault is how you react to that. And I know in today's society, that's a hard lesson for a lot of people. Your actions are yours. How Whatever I do to you, it's not my fault how you react to it. It's your fault. It's your responsibility. You know, I'm responsible for my actions and my reactions. And you're responsible for yours. And that's how it works. We need to get out of this when somebody says somebody can somebody condemns you or tries to counsel you on how you're acting, and your response is, "Yeah, but that person did this to me," or "Yeah, but so and so is doing this," or "Yeah, but no, 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 is no yeah buts. Leave the yeah buts at home. It's you. And if you're not responsible, I mean, here, here you go. You have two choices." You're either responsible for your own actions or you're giving power to other people to control you in your actions. If I do something to you that causes you to react in a sinful way, that's either your fault because you're being you're, you're reacting in a sinful way or you gave me power over you to cause you to act that way. Think about that. Those are the only two options. So either you're in control of yourself or another person is. And what I'm trying to tell you is you need to be in control of you. You need to keep yourself under control. You need to keep yourself going in the direction that God wants you to go. Keep looking forward to Him, looking up, following Him. Yes, we're going to stumble because we always stumble. Because that's what we do. But we need to always what? Stumble forward. And if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say stumble forward, please check the uh, videos on my YouTube, my personal YouTube channel. And one of those is titled Stumbling Forward. Look at that. and Look at that video and you'll know what we're talking about. Just like the other thing I like to say a lot is, please keep stumbling forward my fellow bruised reeds. Bruised reeds another topic of, of a devotion that we did a while back so keep stumbling forward my family of bruise reads 
I love you guys. I hope you're able to go attend a church service in person this morning. If not, find a local church that you can visit online and make a connection with. And then hopefully soon you'll be able to actually go and attend in person. So thank you guys so much for watching. We love you. If you have any prayer requests or praise reports, you can either put them in the comments below on my Facebook page. Or you can send us an email or even a phone call. And our email and phone information is in the description of this and every one of our devotional videos. So thank you again so much for watching. We love you. And we'll see you tomorrow morning. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.